Hey, and welcome back. I'm Grillenheimer. Thanks for being here. Um, this is my last take. I've done this twice already. Um, oh, goodness. And I'm still trying to remember that a verse that I was thinking on my previous one, but that's okay. Let, let's get, let's dive right into it. And it's all about, today is all about sin and uh, where it comes from, from the, the, the fruit from the tree of life that Adam and Eve were tempted to, to eat, and they did. Doesn't matter who went first, they were both going to eat it. Uh, and when they did, they gained consciousness. They gained awareness and knowledge. Or, um, and whether you believe they were the first two people on the earth or the first of many to be on the earth, because um, I've kind of wondered when, when you read early Genesis, yeah, they're the first two made, but were they the only two made by God? I kind of wonder about that, uh, especially when we get into, you start reading about Cain and Abel and other people. It's like, well, where did they come from? Okay. But it's not, I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking about the sin and the knowledge. And if it wasn't for knowledge, if it wasn't for their fall, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have the things we have, whether it's entertainment, pleasure, transportation, simple things from we need from day to day how food is made, the factories we have, um, how we're able to preserve certain foods, uh, keep things around longer, uh, the way we've been able to keep bacteria uh, and you know use chemistry and physics. Uh, science is great. Science is knowledge, but science does not kill God, so to speak. In a sense, in real sense, he did give it to us. He knew they were going to eat the tree. He told them not to. If I tell my one of my kids, don't run through this house, what are they going to do? They're going to run through the house. Uh, if you don't want them to do it, you just say, walk. That helps. If you tell them not to do something, they're going to do it. Um, and basically, that's kind of what happened in Genesis. So it kind of makes you wonder... Yeah, he knew. He created these people. He got to literally walk with them on the earth for a while. But then he knew the will of God, through the will of God, he knew it wasn't going to last. And that they needed to progress. And they did. Um, or we wouldn't have some of the technology we have today. Um, let's, let's move on. I believe this is Acts 26. Verse 18, and it's kind of paraphrased. I, I, it's on the very bottom of my sheet here. It's all kind of scribbled. We need to turn from darkness, and we need to turn towards the light, which means we, we can't keep our eyes on Satan. We need to turn our eyes to God and lift him up in order to receive the forgiveness and his inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in him, or faith in me, as it actually says. Um and, and, and when you ask for Christ in, in your heart, you're, you, do a, you turn your life a whole 180. Oh, wow, that looks cool. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it, it's, it's supposed to help turn your life around a whole 180, but the deal is some religions say you can fall from grace. You need to ask him into your heart again. Some others don't. That if you, you know, aren't being righteous, you need to get back where you were because uh, you can only ask God in your life one time, according to to some, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, other religions. Um, others are different. There's all, I mean, we got so many different religions, it's not funny. But, I mean, it's all up to you. But the point is even when you ask Christ into your life, hopefully your behavior will change. But we will still sin. We've sinned in the past. We're sinning now. Will sin in the future. That's why God forgave his only begotten son to die for us with his blood, wiped sin clean from us. Even though sin never left the world, we are still on the world. We're still fighting the good battle. But the war, it has, is done uh, in a very real spiritual sense. Uh, we will see the the, the reap of all that, the sowing of all that, once we have passed on, 
Um, but let's continue. Romans 6.23 For the way wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh no, it's time for our commercial break. Acts. Let's see here. 22.16 And now why do you delay? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling in his name. Blood. But there's more. Free gift. Eternal life. <laughs> yeah, I kind of did a funny on that. But that's very true. As long as we accept Christ, Christ in our heart, he'll wipe our sins away. Doesn't mean we need to keep sinning on purpose. That's not the point. Uh, we will slip up. We, we, it's hard to be righteous and faithful 100% of the time. Though that's wonderful if we're able to do it. Um, so when we ask him into our, our heart, we, we, we won't just die and give up the ghost per se. We will have eternal life. Um, which, I won't get into that. that. That took too much time the last two times. Uh, I'll skip Hebrews 11.25. Well, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. That was really in a reference to a, a condition of that Moses was going through at the time um, and how he how some people were calling him and he didn't want to be called the, the Pharaoh's daughter's son. Um, but that's kind of in reference to that. 1 John 1.8, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves uh, and the truth is not in us. Uh, I, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John, yeah, write that down if you haven't already. First John 1, 8 through 9. Uh, those are very priceless um, verses there about explaining to us you know, if you, if you think you're not sinning, you are deceiving yourself. Um, it, it, because it, unbelievers, and, and we got a lot of them, and I know we have atheists, and, and, and uh, from what I understand, the real atheists are not the people that don't believe in God. They know of God. They refuse to follow him and, or believe or put any faith in God whatsoever, if I read it right. Um for what I understand. But we need to work with these people. And people do sin. We're all sinners. Um, but only through Christ can our sins be forgiven. Um, everyone who practices sin also practices in lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. That's what Christ, when he came to the world, um, and that flip of the coin of, of, of God himself... He, he came and he was giving us, it's like, okay, the Old Testament is good, but here's the law. Here's the teachings that we need to go by or you need to go by. Uh, Christ, he, he, he was an encyclopedia of laws. That's where a lot of our laws, laws come from, actually, uh, are do stem from the Bible. From, from marriage to divorce to financial issues to social behavior, it's all in the Bible. Um, and we, and we, we need to reference it about that as well. Um, and lawlessness, op, that pretty, I mean, it, I guess it speaks for itself, but it's also the opposite of God's standards, whatever God's standards are for us. He could have them high, he could have them low, but he wants the best for us because he does love us that much. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, 1 John 5, 16. Uh, if anyone sees his brother committing a sin, not leading to death, he shall ask, and God will for him give life to those who commit sin, not leading to death. Um the reference to that is 1 Corinthians 11.30. Uh, extra reading, you need to check that out. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, and 
how do we fight sin? That's the question, okay? We ask God into our heart, and we're Christian. I don't feel any different. Well, it's kind of mental. It's kind of... I don't mean, I didn't mean it that way. It's a mental state. It's a state of being. When you have God in your heart and you're thinking about righteousness and and standing firm in your faith and saying, This is wrong and I know it and I'm gonna refuse to go along with it. That that's part of it, but it's it's so hard. I mean, it's it's not tangible. It's it's I know it. I deal do it as much as I can, being faithful to God, acknowledging Him. Um, oh golly, years ago we we talked about this in a Sunday school at a church I was at. Um, walking with God, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, how you deal socially with other people, and I don't mean all the social social online media stuff. I'm just not into that. Yes, I'm on YouTube and said that, but I really think that social media has brought a lot of people together that are in long distances, that are able to communicate and talk to their loved ones on the whim, on their phone, on a computer, in a library, wherever. Uh, it's just at the tip of our fingertips now. But that much knowledge, that much ability, I think is finally um, from the MySpaces, the YouTubes, yes, YouTube, uh, Facebook, oh, Twitter and all that. It's, I really believe that it's just too much. It's, I, I really think it's miring us down. It's keeping us unengaged so to speak, if you get my meaning. But let's keep going. And the, but like I mentioned, how do, we, how do we keep ourselves from sinning? We have to have faith in God. We have to keep a level of righteousness. And it, it all comes down to, let, yeah, let me just get to it. Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Um... You may or not may or may not believe in the devil. You may believe in God. You may believe in Christ, but the devil, really? Horn guy, Krampus? What? No, I don't believe in that. No. And you might be right. Who knows? No one really knows. But I believe there are spirits among us here on Earth that we can't see, that we really can't, that are untangible to us. But they can pull our emotions. They can manipulate us. What just happened? Oh. Um, and they can manipulate us in such a way that to taunt us and tease us into doing uh, bad acts and things. Oh, my. That's, I was wondering what that was. Um, so we need to be, we need to stand firm, whether it's things you don't need to eat or eat too much of, or overbuying, overspending, doing way too much to your car, to your rims. Um, I mean, we just need to do simple maintenance for our bodies, for our homes, for our vehicles. Uh, it doesn't mean we go over the top, and well, I will admit myself, admitting my sins, that I have gone over the top with some of my collecting stuff, and I have turned around and I've been selling a lot and getting rid of a lot and chucking a lot. Um, but I have, I mean, that's that's all part of it, um, is admitting and doing something about it. Putting on the full armor of God, Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. This is going to sound like an RPG, but it's not. It's right out of the Bible. Number one, gird your loins with truth. Uh, two, the breastplate, that's the breastplate of righteousness. Three, shod your feet with preparations of the gospel of peace. Um, wow, walking with peace on your feet? And the God's peace? Um, four, the shield of faith. Uh, five, the helmet of salvation. Six, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 
Um, also, Jesus himself holds a double-edged sword in Revelation. So that's a, a good reference. But really, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, when we talk, we, we, we need to be able to defend our faith, defend our Bible. Um, it doesn't mean we lash out at others. If, if someone doesn't believe in our faith, it's going to be hard to try to turn them around. Uh, so, and the first part is, like I read before, pray for them. Um, mention the Bible. Mention verses. We memorizing verses of the Bible is good ammunition, if you will, to help keep you to stand firm in your religion and stand firm in your faith with God. Um, so that and then that that this is good extra reading. Put mark mark that uh, on on your homework. Just read all Ephesians six verses thirteen through eighteen. It's a good read. It's a fun read, and it's and, and the full armor of God is basically getting a mental state to be able to go about your life to try to not being tempted from whatever's around you, uh, from doing sin. From doing to doing things to other people in the wrong way or saying the wrong thing, um, that and keeping yourself protected from the unrighteous as well. And yeah, that sounds bad, but it's the truth. Um, and what can we do? We love them. They're our enemy. We have to love our enemies. We have to pray for them. Uh, they're people too, and they may or may not believe in God that that's not going to stop us, that should not stop us from standing firm in our faith with God. That is the main thing. And with that, I thank you for watching. Remember, when you read the Bible, to always pray on what you read. Bless the word of the Bible. Praise the Lord and have a great day.